Okay, one ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. Hello, Your Eminence. Hello, Your Effluence. Uh, the other guy is supposed to be on here at the top of the hour, so we'll slide that since we're late, and I'm late because the uh, internet wasn't available, and then we got it available. So here I am. What do you want to talk about? Uh, well, I guess there's not much news other than the FBI's release of those emails. Uh, well, no, they haven't released the emails. They've announced that the emails um, on the Vena laptop uh, relate to intelligence apparently handled by Humer Aberdeen uh, communicating with Hillary Clinton. And apparently there's 650,000 emails in question. Did you know that? Oh, of course, I know everything. You want to just rattle for a minute? I also have misplaced my wallet, which wouldn't seem important except for I'm supposed to go to uh, Texas on Thursday of next week, and if I don't find my wallet, I'm going nowhere. So talk, and, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, all right. Well, I'll refer to um, today's uh, post. Abel Danger claims that Clinton Foundation donors use 8A servers for online assassination betting and the trade in child pornography and torture killings, as allegedly first staged in 1996 at Pig Farm Raves in BC, sponsored by the Canadian government. Now, I arrived here in BC in 92. Within three weeks, I smelt corruption on a scale I'd never seen anywhere else in the world, including Nigeria and Indonesia where it's fashionable to accuse everyone of being corrupt. The difference between Nigerian and Indonesian corruption, I mean, the, one of the main differences, is you've got guys on the streets with guns who shake you down for money to get through to either an oil rig or some destination, whereas you don't see that very much in Canada. It's much more subtle than that. It's primarily white-collar crime, where people who would ordinarily expect to do the right thing by way of the general public, like politicians, appear to be walking into blackmail traps. And the pig farm was a classic example, I think, of a very modern, sophisticated form of blackmail driven by the United Kingdom, which has been in that business for many years, including stretching back, I would say, to the Jack the Ripper period of 1888. Was that a Whitechapel? Yeah. Was that Jill the Ripper or Jack the Ripper? I gosh, you're a good feel. I know I'm good. I'm also digressing. Guess what? What? I found my wallet. Oh, Wait a minute. Sir. Wait a minute. Let me back up. Guess who found my wallet? Denise. Yes, you and Denise continue. I'm going to the cash machine to celebrate. I'll be right back. Now, are you going to spend all your money on donuts and things? No, the donuts never are available on Monday. You know that. It's today's Monday. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'll, re I'll be right back, okay? I'm going to celebrate. She found my wallet by using it. <laughs> Hello, Denise. Hi, David. So what do you think is going on in the election? Do you think it's going to be a Trump uh, landslide? Uh, I believe so, yes. What about you? Oh, uh, well, you know, the intriguing thing is, even if it wasn't and she managed to steal the election with these Soros-based uh, uh, voting machines that were patented by an outfit called uh, Smart State, she's got terrible problems walking into the Oval Office because between now and whoever does walk into the Oval Office, let's assume it's Hillary, if she's not impeached or prosecuted, I think we're going to look at a mutiny of the FBI. Yes. And only a little distance behind the FBI is going to be the Marine Corps and the Navy and the Air Force and the Army. I mean, this woman is really a psychopath mm -hmm. because she can lie without flinching mm -hmm. and has done so for 30 years. Pretty scary. Well, uh, you know, I think very early on when Field and I first met, he came up with uh, a label for a car, Arkansas. Did you ever see one of those labels? Yes. It's like associated with people who commit suicide by shooting themselves in the back of the head twice, mm -hmm. which just seems a little bit redundant. But anyway, the Clintons are appalling creatures. And I think, you know, what do I know? America actually needs 
uh, a constitutional conference or not a fundamental rewrite. They need to adhere to the principles of the framers, but bring it up to date because now in the old days, with information being power, the elite had the information and the deplorables didn't. And, I, you know, with the greatest respect, uh, Denise, you're a deplorable. Yes. <laughs> you, now, do you know why you're a deplorable? Um, remind me. Well, because Hillary would consider you, in being a consort, if that's the right word, of Field McConnell, mm -hmm. you're a deplorable. Field is a bit deplorable. I'm a deplorable. Everyone listening to the show is a deplorable. David. I can be yes. Did you just call me a deplorable? No, I'm saying that Hillary would consider you to be a deplorable. You didn't see the radio show I had today where I pointed out that Donald Trump is going to be in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 45 miles from where I'm sitting, and he's going to be there tomorrow night at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Doors open at 4. He appears at 7. And I've asked the uh, FBI not to arrest Hillary before 4 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs> well, I think that's very good. So you're going, are you? I have tickets, and I don't know if I'm going or not. And well, wait a minute. Let me. I could put the camera on Denise and ask her truly. And this is totally unrehearsed, and we haven't talked about it. Denise, would you enjoy going over there? I think we should stay in the same place. Oh, I guess we're going, David. Uh, over to you, by the way. And I, I owe Denise for lots of things. Uh, She's much more organized than me. She's in many ways much more capable than me. And strangely enough, she recognizes, and I say strangely enough because so few people have recognized, she recognizes what we're doing and how serious it is. And furthermore, she recognizes how many hours I put into it. And she forgives me when I go nuts when I lose my wallet. Speaking of nuts, do you like ice cream, David? I do. Okay, good. Why don't you talk about something other than ice cream and nuts? And uh, I have heard from a variety of sources that I trust that Hillary has, uh, well, as of last night, she may have 72 hours uh, of freedom, uh, freedom from an indictment or handcuffs. Have you heard anything along those lines? Uh, no, Phil, but I do think it's coming. Oh, I, I think it's coming, and I think it's coming quickly. Have you heard that when Tim Kaine was suckered into running with her, that he was paid a large sum of money and bought a yacht just so he'd run with that witch? No, I didn't. Okay, I'll ask the chat room to back me up or prove me wrong. I'm tired. David, over to you. Okay, well, I'll just go back to that first paragraph um, and go through some of the elements. Now, 1996 saw the introduction of a movement for the reinvention of government, spearheaded by your sister, obviously using corrupted or blackmailed or extorted members of the senior executive service, which effectively runs the government of, uh, of the United States. She founded that movement under the Jimmy Carter regime in 1979 or thereabouts, and she's described as a charter member. <clears throat> in 1984, with Eric Holder, these two reprobates launched the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which strikes me as a pretty good basis for a pedophile, a global pedophile ring, because the Asset Forfeiture Fund is predicated on, as someone drives by in a Lamborghini, that you don't like. You have the local sheriff confiscate it and flog it on the grounds that they can't prove they got to, <laughs> excuse me, I've got to go and get a drink of water. No, hang on a minute. What you have to do is you have to go and get some warm or hot water, and if you have any lemon juice or honey, you have to stick it in there, okay? Okay. Okay, and you don't have my permission to die until the show's over. All right. Okay. I Thank guess you. I'm supposed to talk now. Is that it, David? Absolutely. Or with Denise, because I think uh, that will uh, sort of uh, upgrade upgrade your game. It's upgraded my life. I, in all seriousness, not to sound uh, depressed, because I'm not depressed, but I've been running on empty. 
which is a great song. You know what? While David gets his voice fixed, let's go ahead and have a musical break if I can find it. Oh, no, I forgot about the chat room. Could somebody find Running on Empty by Jackson Brown? Because if anybody can find it, we'll you do hear? it right now. Oh, David, turn your mic on. Testing, one, two, seven, David. Back on. No, no, it's always on. Did you think we were off? Yeah, I didn't hear any noise. That's because you had the live stream shut off, didn't you? Uh, yeah, but not Skype. No, but I wasn't on Skype. I was on live stream playing a song. And uh, you oh. were, yeah, but anyway, I'm back now, so continue. And I'm going to, uh, please give me about three minutes to send an email to tell the other victim that we're going to be late for his show. Okay, all right. Um, so just going back to that first paragraph about the alleged involvement of the Canadian government in sponsoring the killing fields, pun intended, at the pig farm. Um, there's a nickname, a brilliant nickname given to the liberals that ran the Canadian government during the 90s. Is it, the, is it the Lebranos? Yeah, the Lebranos, which I think is a riff on the Sopranos and liberals, which I think is very clever. Thank but you. You're not, go ahead, Phil. No, I was just thanking you for saying I'm clever after you. Yeah, you're, well, you're clever after me, exactly. No, no, no. What's your belt buckle number? Seven. Okay, what's my belt buckle number? Six. I rest my belt buckle. Over to you, old learned one. Well, uh, we have a huge part of circumstantial evidence that the switch from a continuity of government exercise involving a simulated hijacking to a real hijacking and the organized flight of drones was masterminded out of Canada. The amalgam Virgo war game of June the 1st and 2nd, 2001, was between America acting as the blue team and Canada acting as the red team with a 30-hour stand down of blue air shown in the fighter flow diagram associated with Amalgam Virgo. And during that 30-hour stand down at the United States Air Force and the change in rules of engagement which were tested on 1st and 2nd of June 2001, uh, they kicked in, that is Canada, kicked in the use of the anti-hijacking software developed by McDonnell Detweiler in Richmond, B.C., where the outside people could actually get into the Boeing Honeywell uninterruptible autopilot and fly the target machine as a drone or as a decoy. It didn't really matter. Whatever happened is that the pilot was disconnected from voice communications <coughs> with the ground and then with a suitable script, you could impute any kind of theory or narrative for the events of 911, which included the idea that some long bearded wonder straddling a yak in a cave in Afghanistan had the capability of bringing the United States Air Force, Navy, Army, and Marine Corps to its knees. David, would that be a female or a male yak? Um, I don't think uh, bin Laden particularly cared, as long as they had the appropriate number of orifices. Well, I'll leave it at that. Continue. So, with that training that was taking place in 2001, we can relate that back to the blackmail ring that was set up in BC in 1996 by the Libranos of the Canadian government. Because, let me just read what it says. Um, the Picton brothers gradually neglected the site's farming operations. They registered a non-profit charity. Um, that's an interesting term because I guess that would be applied to the Clinton Foundation. This one was called the Piggy Palace Good Time Society with the Canadian government in 1996 as aiming to, quote, organize, coordinate, manage and operate special events, functions, dances, shows and exhibitions on behalf of ser service organizations, sports organizations and other worthy groups. And I'm thinking that term, worthy group, do you think that could describe the Clinton Foundation field? Over to you. Did you say unworthy group? 
well, in, in Wikipedia, it's other worthy group, but I think you're absolutely right. It's an unworthy group, right? As far as I'm concerned, I mean, they kill black people with U-2 spy planes, and if they right. don't, why haven't they sued me for libel? If anybody were to uh, Google Clinton Foundation plus kill blacks plus U-2 plus 80-1076, in other words, 80-1076, you'll see that uh, on two occasions, the Clinton Foundation killed a bunch of poor black people so they could reap a huge financial windfall. And uh, if we don't get them for that, God will. So we can relax. David, over to you. Yeah, we'll get them. Anyway, its events included raves and wild parties featuring Vancouver prostitutes and gathering in a converted slaughterhouse. These events attracted as many as 2,000 people. Hells Angels members were known to often frequent the farm. Now, let me go back to when I ran a, as a Reform Party candidate in the provincial election. I was uh, strolling around the community trying to get votes, and I went across to a hairdresser where I and my late wife used to get our hair done, and was talking to a woman there about her vote. And I talked about justice for the prostitutes who were killed at the pig farm and talking along the lines that no civilized society can accept the unlawful killing of the least of its members, including prostitutes, and call itself civilized. And BC has rolled over and accepted that a rather retarded guy was responsible for the murder of and a native friend of mine says it could be a hundred women and children out at the pig farm. So let me just put it to Americans and any of our listeners. If these events, which are quite spectacular in the worst sense of the word, attract 2,000 people, how far afield did they come from? Did you say uh, how far afield? Yes, I did. Well, I'm a rather close field. I don't think there is a far field unless you're in UK. Right. Okay, well, I think you reach everywhere, so everywhere is close to field, I think, in this modern age. Yeah, I think you're right. I rest my case, and now I'm going to drink some coffee, wishing that Denise uh, wasn't watching my stash of beer so closely. Well, uh, she'd better watch it carefully, because we don't want any slithering of the language by the end of the show. Well, when am I allowed to slither my language, oh, master of the slithering devices? <laughs> Well, I don't want to go back to that first conversation, but that's kind of by the by. Oh, you mean um, where you said, are you a pilot? And I said, yes. And you said military or airline. And I said both. And you said, oh, this is like Christmas. By the way, you're not a drunk, are you? And I slurred my speech. Yeah, you're not going to forget that in a hurry, are you? No, but it, uh, did you see the blue and gold airplane in today's radio show ad? Yes. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Somebody that I never talked to until yesterday, about 9 or 10 in the morning, Sunday, a gentleman, and this happens uh, routinely, a gentleman said, Field, I've been listening to you and David for about a year, and it's none of my business, but I'm a commercial artist if you ever need any artwork done. And I said, as a matter of fact, there's a good chance that we may be getting a jet airplane in the next couple of weeks. And uh, one of the jet airplanes for sale that we're looking at comes complete with a paid-for paint job. I said, can you, I gave him a picture of the airplane, the way it sits, and another airplane that had a similar paint job. I said, can you come up with a nice paint job? And so the guy I never met before yesterday, about 9 or 10 a.m., came up with that paint job in one hour or less. Uh, so I'll leave it at that while you do some something intellectual. I'm passing the coffee over to Denise. I hate to drink alone. David might say I slur my speech. Uh, yes, Phil. Well, I, I'm, I'm more circumspect now that I know you better. I don't know what that means, but I think it's a compliment, so thank you. All right. It's a pleasure. So um, I just popped up a little brief about the FBI searching the Wiener computer. And when they were searching it, they were looking for child pornography. So I think we have a fascinating line of reasoning that the raves at the pig farm, sponsored by the Canadian government, 
were actually used to develop an archive of snuff films where people were invited to the old slaughterhouse, probably not told that they were going to witness a snuff film. They were probably told they were going to witness some actors pretending to be in a snuff film and they could participate. The Hells Angels are there. Apparently there's a a 600-pound boar, I don't know if that's feasible, running around like a dog nipping at people. Would you like to be nipped by a 600-pound boar, Field? Over to you. Uh, well, first of all, I don't find you that boring, and secondly, I don't think Hillary weighs 600. I think she's close to 340. Uh, uh, did you see the picture of Hillary uh, topless with her college lesbian roommate? Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Are you sure that's Hillary? Uh, the, the smaller of the two, and I don't mean shorter. Uh, is Hillary. In the breasts? David, would I ever be so unkind? Uh, no. Of course not. So delete your question and press on with your uh, narrative. Okay. All right. So the Federal Bridge Certification Authority is launched in 1996, in the same year as your sister and her lesbian cronies glory in the fact that they've now got a handle on reinvented government. The awards for the uh, reinvention of government uh, were in particular given to a, Nor uh, a Nortel software package called Joint Automated Booking System. And this uh, theoretically was developed for the Bureau, Bureau, DOJ Pride or Department of Justice, but what it allowed them to do was to book uh, prisoners and victims and camera crews into the crime scene before the crime occurred. Now, one of the systems that was used to fly prisoners to the pig farm, in my opinion, was your sister's Con Air. And that was one of the recipients, presumably with your sister, for one of the hammers with the ribbon attached, which was the Gore Hammer Award. So your sister was singled out for helping to reinvent government with the launch of the Justice Prisoner and Alien Transportation System which of course would have given her some wonderful opportunities to fly some really nasty people up to Port Coquitlam, if Port Coquitlam has, a, has a, an airport, I don't know if it does, or Vancouver International Airport, or Abbotsford, where they were converting the Boeings to fly a 911. So your sister certainly has the opportunity to put people in place to produce snuff films and give them an alibi because, of course, after the film has been recorded or backhauled to wherever it's being stored, the prisoners can get back on the aircraft and your sister can take them to the original jail they were let out of, you know, on furlough or even to a different jail. Basically, your sister can launder pedophiles from the time she launched that JPAT system or Conair in 1994 right up to the present time. Because I think she has found that this is a very efficient way of getting total obedience from otherwise decent men and women in the government system. Because I don't believe every member of the government is corrupt. I do believe a very significant number of them are scared to death. Because they've seen images, let's say hypothetically, the murder of John Bonet Ramsey uh, in real time or if not in real time, soon afterwards. Now let's just go back to the John Bene Ramsey. I think everything is falling in place, Phil. John Ramsey, the father at the time, was the chief executive officer of Access Graphics, which was a wholly owned subsidiary of Lockheed Martin, which is one of the mentor companies on the Federal Bridge. And at the time John Bene was murdered, two directors that would play a very important role on 911 were directors of Lockheed Martin and presumably had signed off on the bonus of $118,000 requested in the ransom note to John Benet's father. So uh, the two directors of interest are Norman Minetta. And you tell the listeners field, if you would, why Norman Minetta might have a grudge that he would uh, exercise on 911. Yeah, his family was offered two choices uh, shortly after 7 December 1941. 
when your countryman Lord Mountbatten worked with FDR and some other international reprobates to fake an attack at Pearl Harbor. But uh, anyway, um, Norman Mineta was a little boy and his family was told they could go to Japan or they could go to an internment camp. And I think they went to an internment camp and uh, he feels bad about that. Tough shit, you little nipper. My dad went to an internment camp too. It's called POW Camp Ofuna, right outside of uh, Tokyo. And he sat there for 16 months and got the crap beat out of him by a guy called the bird. And guess what, Mineta? There's a bird for you. Uh, I, there's bad things happen in wars. That's why you little piss ant politicians should stop having wars. We've had war in the United States of America for the vast majority of the last 267 years. And as far as you being a little short, confused nipper, that's your problem, pal, not mine. And the United States military don't need to be sent off to wars where they'll be messed with mentally, reconfigured physically, maimed, PTSD, dead. The lucky ones die. And the very lucky ones die a rapid death. Now we're having 22 suicides a day in the country when people like you, a little short nipper with a horseshit attitude, and that lesbian married to the guy that's had four heart attacks, uh, his name's Dick, probably the biggest dick in Wyoming. And then, of course, there's that old geezer named George, or what's his name, uh, David Rockefeller. He's on his seventh heart. I, don't, I think it would actually be a six, because I don't think he had one when he was made in the factory. So as far as Manetta having a bad attitude, because he and a bunch of other little yellow devils got thrown into a prison camp. What about all the American, the British, the New Zealand, the Australian, the Canadian guys got thrown into German prison camps and POW camps in Japan? What about them, you little yellow nerd? David, did I cover the subject well enough or do you want more? No, no, that's uh, fine, Phil, but uh, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, so one of the things that will be accrue great benefit or credit, I think, to April Danger is if we're able to link revenge in the soul of Norman Mineta, if he's got one, for being arrested or with the family interned after the 1941 Pearl Harbor attack, to revenge on 911. Because if you look at 911 and compare it with Pearl Harbor, the British somehow or other managed to get the United States defenses at Pearl Harbor stood down. And back then, in 1941, the company that would become Serco was called RCAGB 1929. And it provided the wireless communications. In fact, RCA in New York, the parent company, <clears throat> was described as a radio patent monopoly company. That is to say, anyone who invented anything with radio would be screwed, killed, bought, bribed, or extorted out of the rights in that patent. And it would accrue to uh, RCA under the chairmanship of one David Sarnoff, who was on the Marconi Communications, Wireless Communications Telegraph, when the Titanic was sunk. So RCA GB 1929 changes its name in 1988 to Serco. And Serco provides the communications technology or the patent pool of communications technology, now known as C4I, for the attack of 911. Now, Americans might ask, well, they should ask, why would Boeing outsource the development of command control communications, computers, and intelligence technology to the British company, Circuit. Surely it's a defense contractor that has some kind of review, periodic review, from a point of view of national security. Because when Boeing outsourced the development and operations of its command control communications, computers, and intelligence, it set itself and the country up for what is known as a man-in-the-middle attack. Did I explain to you what a man-in-the-middle attack is, Field, over to you? 
Yes, and you know, uh, of all the Bee Gees, wait a minute, let's stop and see. How many Bee Gees do you know? Do you know how many of Bee Gees kids there were? There were four. You're close. There were five, but they're four boys. Do you remember any of the four boys' names? No, I don't. The youngest was Andy Gibb. He committed suicide with alcohol and drugs because uh, Victoria Principal was not interested in his overtures. And of course, for you, as as everyone at Able Danger knows, Victoria Principal went to the same high school as me in Puerto Rico, Ramey Air Force Base High School. Um, although she went in her pre-high school years, same school system. Um, moving right along, well, let's start at the top now. The top kid, I believe, was a female. Then came Barry. He's the soul of the four sons that's still alive. He's the guy with the falsetto voice. Then came twins, Barry and Robin. And the reason why I'm forcing you for this education that's quite pleasant is, uh, no, I said Barry and Robin. I meant Maurice and Robin. Robin was the guy with the funny hairdo, and Maurice was the guy that never got to sing much, and apparently he didn't like the fact that his brothers Barry and Robin got to do all the lead singings. And uh, as a reward for our listeners, at the end of this show, I'm going to do a song called Man in the Middle, and the lead singer on that is Maurice. Maurice died in 2003, I think it was, at age 53. Yep, that works out because they were born in 49. And he died of uh, a gastrointestinal disorder, which I think basically was sort of like when a horse colics and its uh, intestines get twisted. In other words, he died of something that he should not have had to die for if he had treatment quicker. Uh, Robin died of cancer, I believe, in 2012, maybe 2011. Uh, Barry's the only one left. Uh, and if we get the ranch in Texas, I'm going to invite Barry and a country singer whose name escapes me, but oh, Ricky Skaggs. Um, there's a wonderful interview of Barry, uh, Barry Gibb and Ricky Skaggs in Nashville about a year and a half ago. Uh, and uh, I think we are going to get the ranch. Uh, I think we will have a definitive answer uh, in the month of November, probably the earlier part of November. And that's why, you remember that blue airplane that was in today's radio show I had, David? Yep. There's a very good chance we're going to have that and be painted just like that. It says Angel One. But anyway, I'll get back to you. Your question was what? A uh, man in the middle? Yes, a man yeah. in the middle in the attack is when uh, the United States sends a signal to the U.S. forces in Europe and uh, interpreters in England or France or Germany interpret the message and change the context. For instance, I'll give you an example. This is the Pentagon calling all forces afield in Europe. Uh, we expect you to be attacked by ISIS in seven hours. Okay, well the French, the Brits, and the Germans may interfere with that message and say, to all U.S. forces deployed in Europe, we have been told by your headquarters at the Pentagon that you could, should be expecting an attack from ISIS in the next seven days. Did you get the subtle difference? Yes. Oh, good. You go ahead and do the smart crap. Okay, so as uh, Henry set up uh, Serco with uh, her oppos, uh, in the pedophiles in Brussels, to give uh, Serco the job of operating the EU's emergency response group. And so just riffing off what you just said, what would have happened uh, in that attack on the Bataclan concert hall, um, a message might have gone through the EU Situation Center from investigators around the world that there was going to be an attack. But Serco is operating the EU Situation Center. So Serco intercepts that message and changes it and says, I don't know, the Bataclan concert hall will not be attacked, whatever it is. And then these characters swan in, <clears throat> and it's very interesting because I think there was a claim recently, maybe it was through you, Phil, that uh, they were shipping drugs through the instruments of British rock bands going into the United States, which is pretty dirty. I think 
There was a fast and furious gun found in the Bataclan concert hall where they massacred uh, the members of the audience. And I think uh, Obama and this network I'm talking about provided the weapons, courtesy of Serco, to negotiate what essentially was a man in the middle attack. Second paragraph of today's post. AD claims that Clinton aides hired pedophile pimps to entrap and extort the directors of Boeing into joining the Federal Bridge Certification Authority as mentors, outsourcing C4I developments to Serco, moving the headquarters office to Chicago, and staging 911. One of my questions for the FBI is, what the hell are you guys doing failing to interview every director of Boeing on the morning of 911? Where were they? Were they in the newly commissioned headquarters office? Who forced them to move? Why did they move? Etc. Etc. So any self-respecting FBI agent, and probably the agents wanted to do this, but they were blocked from doing it by corrupt officials in the Department of Justice reporting to your sister. Is that plausible? I wasn't listening. I think so. Uh, in fact, okay. I, but uh, can I, I've been sort of busy. Can I read something to you, David? Please do. This just came from one of our people who I uh, know and respect. And uh, I'll show you the message first. Uh, the guy sent me a very long message and I said, could you cut out all the BS and just tell me the important stuff? And here's the important stuff. Uh, General Dunford gave a direct order from, okay, about General Dunford, a direct order from your top general to defend the Constitution, go after the Federal Reserve Board, confiscate these crime families uh, what the, and what they've stolen, uh, told the White Dragon Society they will support the move to take down the Kazarian Mafia, Mafia excuse me. Uh, Hillary Clinton has already sent $1.2 billion to Qatar and plans to flee there soon. Uh, she better flee, the, flee there really, really soon because what I've heard in the last uh, 18 hours is she's probably going nowhere. Uh, anyway, that's just, you know, hearsay from some pretty good sources. Uh, Hillary Clinton, yeah, blah, blah. NSA sources confirm that Hillary Clinton is guilty of mass murder. Haiti, Fukushima, Libya, Syria, etc. Let's throw in one that this gentleman didn't have, Katrina. Uh, the reason I say that is about 10 days ago, I communicated with government officials and media outlets in Haiti, and I said, uh, if you Haiti people, meaning Haitians, if you guys are really upset with the Clinton Foundation, why are you not going after the fact that they used a specific U2, the tail number 80-1076, on the 12th of January of 2010 to make sure that the, uh, did you fall down dead, David, or are you still among the living? No, a little pen fell off the magnet of my seal on my desk. Oh, I don't blame it. Uh, but anyway, I think the Haitians uh, probably need to revisit the U-2 that was at Brinkman uh, CGIS, Coast Guard Air Station, on the... Uh, 10th of January, no, excuse me, 12th of January of 2010. And some people might ask how I got that original photo of the U-2 in a secure hangar at what used to be Ramey Air Force Base, Puerto Rico. And some people may wonder about the unprofessional looking nose art. Well, the unprofessional looking nose art was all in, I'm saying nose, nose art, not Mozart. David, did I ever tell you, uh, What's brown and sits on a piano bench? What's brown and sits on a piano bench? No. Mozart's last movement. Uh, however, oh, gosh. David, it's okay. I mean, the stuff we deal in is pretty heavy. We need some levity. I did describe, oh, I, I did educate you about what levity is, didn't I? Well, if there's any levity, the brown thing would not be sitting on the bench. No, that's gravity. No, levity, levitation. Oh, I see. I stand corrected. Uh, Go Banks over in London just put up a far away shot of the U2 and a close up. The close up shot of the U2 shows a dragon, a Puerto Rican flag. Uh, across the top of the flag, it says 9th SRS, which is Strategic Reconnaissance Squadron of Beale Air Force Base, California, where last month a guy named Ira S. Eady, E A D I E, was killed in a U2 crash. 
Um, and I'm trying to figure out if he ever flew aircraft. I know he flew aircraft 80-1076, but what I'd like to determine is if he was flying it in Puerto Rico or over Katrina or both. And that's what I've told the, uh, the media and the world is that the Clinton Foundation uses U-2s uh, to kill poor black people. And I don't think that's very nice, but it, it doesn't matter what I think. I can guarantee you, God doesn't like it. And did I hear you say about 20 minutes ago that uh, something about the least of these people, and I think you were referring to the prostitutes uh, in Vancouver. Did you use the term the least of these people? Yes. Okay, just give me a... We didn't do the Bible stuff yet. No. In fact, I'll hold off until 22 minutes after, and I'll do it then. But it's the least of these brothers of mine. Over to you, David. Yeah, and obviously brothers is generic, like brothers and sisters. And uh, I was talking with someone who asked me the other day about why do you keep going on about the pig farm? And I said, you know, uh, justice has not been done, and uh, we don't live in a civilized society if it doesn't uh, do justice, particularly on, some, on crimes as horrific as was visited upon these poor women who went out to the pig farm and didn't return. <clears throat> anyway, third paragraph of today's post. AD claims that Serco has been providing a murder-for-hire service to Clinton donors by synchronizing Zulu death betting on 8A servers with in-flight snuff films, which victims watch as they are flown to their deaths and with which loved ones are silenced by fear. Now, I think there were five Raytheon technical people involved in the flights of 911 who didn't come home. And Raytheon, of course, is a very important mentor on the Federal Bridge. In fact, I think you and I and many others feel agreed that they would have supplied the A3 Sky Warrior to take out the Pentagon's U.S. Navy Command Center. Now, what will have happened is, on that assumption, a number of technical people involved in modifying the A3 Sky Warrior so it could fly those maneuvers would have learned about it, and they would have been invited or booked into flights that were hijacked on 911. And that's part of the principle of the Clinton Foundation, I believe, that in order to cover up the tracks of the murder of a high-value target, you have to kill a whole bunch of people around them in the hope <clears throat> that when investigators like Able Danger come along, they won't notice or pick out the high-value target because so many other people have been died, have been, well, been died, yeah. So I think we can conclusively prove that the mentors that is to say, the Small Business Administration mentors on the Federal Bridge, just to remind listeners, it includes Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and Northrop Grumman, were an absolutely key to the attempted coup d'etat of 911, where your sister and her 8A companies, through bogus, phony, and corrupt set-aside contracts, actually got inside Boeing's command system to launch a man-in-the-middle attack that was framed so the public would be deceived into thinking it was the long bearded wonder in the cave in Afghanistan, when in fact it was a domestic attack from forces inside the United States and their uh, partners in Canada. So I got a feeling, and it's rather a delightful field, that we have momentum, that there's nothing that can stop us. And somewhere else I saw a point that when your opponent in a debate starts using facts, you lose. Now, can we prove any one component of this is a fact? Yes. Go ahead. We can prove my sister took my uh, intellectual property uh, regarding the droning of airline or transport category aircraft, and she took the information, shared it with Hillary, Hillary got the patent on the QRS-11, which went into the Raytheon uh, guidance system, which was in the Boeing airliners, all of them. And the, I'm not anti-Boeing. I'm the biggest Boeing fan in the world, I believe. Uh, my whole family, and, well, wait a minute. I only have two parents and, a, and myself. I forgot my sister got kicked out of my family by me, not because she's a lesbo, 
or a hydristophiliac lesbo, but because she's been committing treason uh, going back to 1979 when she and a bunch of other evil lynches uh, started reinventing government, which they uh, wrongfully and boastfully bragged about, which is redundant, on the 22nd of October of 1996. Do you know why I used the date 22 October 96, David? 22 October 96 in the Great Hall of Justice. Yeah, they reinvented government. Well, the problem is nobody, uh, none of the constituents of the Republic of the United States of America, the real United States, not the one that was created many times, including 1871 with the Organic Act of 1871, but uh, the United States populace didn't ask to have the government reinstated. What we're asking then and we're asking now is to have the government live up to their own laws and throw people in the slammer, whether they've got kickstands or donuts, it doesn't matter. And if their real last name is Rockefeller, you know, like Bill Clinton's real last name is Rockefeller, if he wants to check his DNA, we know he likes to scatter his DNA. He has a half black son named Danny Williams Clinton, uh, or maybe maybe Hillary would like to check out her family history because Dan Rostenkowski, which I can't pronounce or spell, uh, and her father, Huge Rodham, uh, not to be confused with another Hugh, never mind, this is a family show. I'll put it in the chat room. But anyway, when, uh, when Al Capone was taken out of service, uh, in the Chicago Mafia, his two replacements were Dan Roskinkowski and Hugh Rodham. And Hillary knows this, Bill knows it, and they're not fooling everyone. And see the whole problem with 9-11? Uh, if you only fool 99.97% of the population and you got three or four big mouths, or as my sister refers to us, blabbermouths, if we're communicating effectively with the Donald Trump campaign, which will be 45 minutes from here tomorrow, uh, the doors open at 4 p.m. He shows up at 7 p.m. I've got two tickets. Denise tells me we're going. So I guess we are. The question now is should we take a limousine or should we take the hearse? And uh, I guess it depends on the weather. I'd rather take the hearse. I think it would make a great photo opportunity. And uh, so if people in the chat room could just say Studebakers are out. Okay, so don't suggest a Studebaker. But you can uh, suggest a hearse or a, or a limo for the uh, able danger visit to Trump land. And for the doubting Thomas named George, who says uh, you probably never get in. Well, we already got tickets and there's only so many tickets. So if you have tickets, you will get in. Do I care if I get in? No. I'll be happy if I get to Eau Claire with a hearse and I get a picture taken of the hearse at the venue. And since the venue opens at 4, and you don't need to be there until 7. I think we'll have ample opportunity to get any photos we want, speaking of not only Field and Denise, but also Abel Danger uh, globally, or should I said, or should I say Abel Danger abroad. David, over to you. <clears throat> yes, thanks, Jim. Uh, could you put your vehicle near his uh, plane? I mean, is there any way of maneuvering a, a bit, of, um, bit of a collage there? A bit of a collage for what? putting your vehicle near his plane or somewhere? Well, you're talking to the wrong person and you already know the answer. Let's do this easy. Who should you who should you direct that to? Uh, great. And what would his answer be? Could be. No, he'd say yes and he'd get it done right away. So if you want to send Craig an email, I suggest you do that. But go back to being smart because you're going to be done pretty soon. Okay, fourth paragraph, United States Marine Field McConnell, Global Operations Director of Able Danger, has offered to serve as a five-star general in the Trump administration to help Trump destroy the Clinton Bridge of Pimps and obtain justice for victims of death by plane. Now, here's a warning, and I pray it doesn't happen. Trump, I believe, flies around in a Boeing, right, Phil? Yeah, a Boeing 757. And all Boeings, either surreptitiously or uh, as a result of a conspiracy, could be modified for death by plane, where the passengers in that Boeing might watch a screen inside the Boeing that shows them flying towards the target 
where there's going to be a crash which kills them. And those images, which is essentially a snuff film with a timestamp on the bottom, can be transmitted to the passenger's loved ones. So at the same time as the passenger watches himself or herself heading towards the target to a certain death, the loved ones of those victims can watch either in real time or as a playback their loved ones being killed or murdered. And that, I think, is consistent with the seminar given by Bernadine Dorn at Northwestern University entitled Torture, Paradigms and Practice. So it's important that Americans remember that Bernadine Dorn is a psychopathic torturer who groomed Michelle Obama at Sidley Austin to become a intellectual property lawyer. So just as Hillary became a, a patent lawyer and would appear to have control or custody or access to the keys for the Boeing command control communications computers and intelligence system, we have Michelle Obama, who's an intellectual property lawyer for the archives of snuff films that go back to the pig farm. So those two women, whether they want to hang together or separately, I don't care, but I'm pretty sure they're going to hang, Phil. And so that's 12.22, and I think it's time to hand over to you. Oh, well, 12.22 is prayer time. So don't go anywhere, David, because you said something about the least of these brothers of mine, and I can always find that in two attempts because it's in the book of Matthew, which I'm going to now, and it's either 2538 or 2838, and I'm pretty sure it's 2538. So I'm going to read this for everybody equally, but especially for Jackie S. over in the U.K., who uh, apparently is gaining an appetite for this form of truth, which is the only form of real truth that uh, you can use for eternity, and also for Maranatha in Texas, who is encouraging, um, and I'm sure other people are encouraging Jackie S. to... Uh, to, to understand this stuff. Let me see if it's 25 8. Uh, do, 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 25, 25, what did I say? 25, 28 to 40. Ah, it's not that, so it must be 28. Let me see. Hang on, David. This is, this is our uh, scriptural time. 28, 28, okay. And if this isn't right, I'm really going to be embarrassed. Wait a minute. I, don't, I think I'm going to be embarrassed. There is no 2838, so it's got to be 2538. Let me, oh yes, it is. I was right the first time, David. You should have more confidence in me. Uh, I'm going to start at 34, and I'm going to read this and take my time reading it. This is, uh, and by the way, for Jack ES or other people that are developing an appetite, you don't need to have a Bible like, like this one. You can go to BibleGateway.com. Uh, you can go to any, if you just put in a scripture in your search bar, it'll take you to a Bible source. But in this case, we're talking about the sheep and the goats. And the sheep, well, very appropriate because the sheep are uh, the ones who are called by his name because he's the, the shepherd. Let's talk about some of the sheep he likes. Now, the goats are the ones that are going to hell. Uh, then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, that's the sheep, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothes you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king, will, and there's only one king, one king. The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, that's the goats, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil 
and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Now, for those people who are new, like Jackie, us, and anyone else, righteous isn't something that you claim or you can achieve. It's something you're given. And when David leaves, I'll go back and I'll read Romans uh, 20, Romans 8, 28 to 40. Well, Romans 8, 28 to 39. And it'll show you how you become righteous. You can only become righteous if he declares you righteous. And David, uh, whether you understand it or not, God declares that you're righteous. And most of the people uh, in our chat room right now, I'm sure, I'm confident that God has declared them righteous. And if anybody doubts it, you can email me, F-I-E-L-D-M-C-C -C at yahoo.com, or you can uh, contact Maranatha in the chat room. Let's see who else I might know that you can, uh, if you ever see Kanema in the chat room, he can uh, help you with that. Uh, do -de do dum -de do do -de do Oh, George Spain could help you with that. Uh, we don't have Agent Biltmore here today. He could help you with that. Jack Mack could help you with that. James Kin could help you with that. Uh, M4 Sabal could help you with that. I already mentioned Maranatha. Uh, do -de do And I'm, I'm getting over some people I don't know. Uh, that doesn't mean those people couldn't help you. But uh, help is free and help is eternal. And you don't have to give up anything. And I'll, oh, did I put this here? Yeah, you didn't put it there, did you? Well, I told you you didn't have to give up anything. No, uh, actually, the burden is light. Um, when someone decides that they've had enough of the world their way or, you know, things aren't going the way they would wish uh, and they turn to God, he will never turn them away. And, David, I don't want to get overly uh, truthful with you, but let me just tell you in front of all these people that I am 100% confident that God himself has deemed you righteous. Now, are you going to go away? Uh, well, I, that's a very nice compliment. I'm certainly not going to argue with it. Well, yeah, I think I've got to go and uh, feed my face. Okay, well, you go feed your face. Uh, I'm going to ask someone in the chat room to remind me if I was, yeah, I was supposed to sing uh, Man in the Middle by the Bee Gees, and then I'm going to get Johnny uh, Cerucci on. So why don't you say goodbye to everybody, and then you try to hang up before I hang up on you, David. David, did you say goodbye? Uh, uh, I no. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to push the abandon Skype button. Okay. okay, I pushed it for him. Uh, moving right along, we're going back to the chat room. Hey, there it is. Go Banks. Thanks. Here, let's, this is one of the best songs. In fact, you know what? This song is so good uh, that we need to have the lyrics up. So while I get the music started, would someone just Google lyrics plus man in the middle plus Bee Gees? Uh, and if the lyrics don't come up, uh, I'll go ahead and sing it anyway. George S., you're, you're very welcome. Uh, people can't really be Christians and hide it very long, not from other Christians, because there's certain, there certain words that Christians use and many thoughts that Christians use that uh, you don't have to dress up. You don't even have to shave like I did today because Denise told me I had to. But she's, she's a light burden too, so her yoke is not heavy. In fact, She's the best thing that ever happened to me, honestly. Let's sing a song from the Bee Gees. Uh-oh. I can't play it, uh, Go Banks, because we're in two different countries. So unless somebody in the United States puts it up. Oh, there's the lyrics. Thanks. Okay, well, I'll go get the song. 
Oh, and there's lyrics from two different people in England. I will get the song and I will start it. And then I will try to do as many of the lyrics as I can without cheating. But of course, I'll cheat so I get 100% just like I did in college. Okay, man in the middle. Man in the middle plus BGs. This is a great song, but it's imperative you sing along and you have the, uh, oh, this is great. My favorite version. As a role in the Bee Gees, Morris didn't really, as, as I didn't have a role, and neither does Barry, we were creative equals. We didn't really, of course, obviously being a great keyboard player and a great inspiration to the writing process, um, we all equally wrote lyrics and, and, uh, and music. Man in the Middle is one of the, my, my tracks uh, that we did on the album. We all, we all sort of ran off and did two to three oh, tracks each. Off. We didn't <laughs> really run. I didn't have to go anywhere. So to approach, this, <laughs> to approach this album, we tried to do it in a different way. So what we did is we, we decided that each one of us would go off and do two to three tracks each, and we picked the best of them all and put them on the album and do the rest together. So this was the first track I cut uh, for myself, and I enjoyed it because I'm doing the back track as well, and I'm jamming, and it was a sort of like self-expression self -expression coming out, and being in the middle of a... Uh, it could be in the middle of a romance, it could be in the middle of anything, really. But we know what it's about. Well, we really know what it's about. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was my way of, yeah, of self-expression and uh, having fun at the same time. <laughs> I've got a plan that can never go wrong. You took advantage and the damage done, they don't come back to me. They don't come back to me. Got nowhere to run and hide. Nor Homa, nor Christy and Marcy. I know I let you down in so many ways. I know that sorry doesn't tell you what you want me to say, but I would die for you, baby. Yes, I would die for you.
Well, too bad David wasn't around to hear that. But anyway, um, at the very end of that song, let me go right to the last of it. Thanks, Doreen, for putting these up. It says, I'm just the man, the only man, that stupid man, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Well, I would suggest that uh, Anthony Weiner is the only stupid man in a network of females, alleged fem females like Hillary, Huma, and Christine Marcy, and there is no place for these people to hide. Um, so I'm going to go back in the chat room now, and I'm going to catch up with the chat room. Thank you all for putting up the music and the lyrics. Uh, and then I'm going to go get Johnny Cerucci. Uh, let's do, 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 do. Oh, Ford Motor Company. Yes, they built, uh, they, I don't know how I forgot that one, because they built those, I think, Jack Mack. Didn't they build the uh, B-24s at Ypsilanti in Detroit? Wasn't that Ford that built them there? I'm sure it was, and I'm not making this up. And sometimes people think I have a sense of humor, so if I say something that seems humorous, they think I'm being funny. I'm going to say something that could really offend some small people. But when... Uh, when Ford was building their share of the 18,000 B-24s at Ypsilanti in Detroit, uh, they had a air duct at the leading edge of the wing that was about this big around. And to they, they put out an airplane probably more than one an hour. Uh, but to speed up the assembly of the aircraft, they used uh, dwarfs and midgets. And you got to really be thankful to those little people that if they must not have been claustrophobic because they'd go down a tunnel like this in the dark and work inside an airplane. And, you know, it, it shows the commitment of Americans or Brits or French or Germans or Aussies or Kiwis or Indians or Vietnamese or Russians. Probably should have said Russians first uh, because any nations citizens who believe in their government and their uh, reason for being in a war would certainly do anything they could. And for people with special abilities, like these small people who could fit in that, they really sped up the production of B-24s. And as I said earlier, it doesn't matter to anybody, it matters to me, but very few others. The B-17 gets all the glory from World War II as far as bombers go. They built 15,000 plus. B-24s, they built 18,000 plus. And so um, I, uh, I hope someday the B-24s are held up in the same high regard the B-17s are. Enough about that. I got to get going. Uh, thank you, everybody who put up music and lyrics. Uh, Brazil out at CNN after WikiLeaves. She gave debate questions to Clinton camp. Yeah, okay. Well, little by little, this thing's going to fall flat here in the next 72 hours, I think. First time hearing it and reading the lyrics. Yeah, isn't that a great song, Doreen? Uh, and of course, these people do get, uh, one of David's favorite songs is The Show Must Go On, and uh, that's by Leo Sayer. And uh, that is also sort of a similar of somebody getting wrapped into a complicated plan and finding there's no way out. Uh, traitors, yeah, I don't like traitors, and I don't think anybody in any country does. Uh, Raytheon 9-11. Raytheon Dead Men Tell No... Thanks for putting that up, uh, Jameskin. Let me blow it up and see if I can read it better. Seven Raytheon employees killed on 9-11 on three hijacked planes. Senior management with the technology used to fly commercial jumbo jets by remote control. What are the chances? Yeah, what are the chances? Uh, thank you. I'm going to... Uh, Oh, yeah, okay, well, this, the, you just, uh, who is this? Jameskin, I think. Let's see. Yeah, Jameskin, you just wrote Thursday show for us. Thank you, and I'll publish this tonight. Um, I thought there were just five. There were seven Raytheon guys. Uh, so I'm going to catch up, and then I'm going to end this, and we'll go, we're going to start another show on another link for Johnny Cerucci. She denied, lied, broke devices, bleached her server, but forgot to wash her wiener. Well, with that, I'm going to call for the big red button. Uh, that's good. Yeah, she, 
I'll put that in whatever I work on tonight, too. Which reminds me, it's Monday night football tonight, and the Vikings are going to beat Chicago by a score of 38 to 10, uh, I think. Uh, so Mensamax, how come there's no big red button yet? And for all of you people that, well, if anybody wants to uh, stay put for Johnny Cerucci, come to think of it, did I build a show for Johnny Cerucci? Yes, I did. Uh, I need a big red button. Oh, good. There's the big red button. <clears throat> Does anybody happen to have the link for Johnny Cerucci's show? If you do and you get it up before I get a 3, 2, 1, push it. No, that's not quite right, Go Bags. You said push it real hard, 3, 2, 1. It's, it has to be proper. I'm not going to, that's called biting on chaff. When you see something and your exuberance to, 